Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as I discuss my design philosophy to build this three-channel foam RC flyer. It's an interesting story. Uh, yesterday we had the first test flight. It was a complete disaster. The four straight crashes. The rudder simply didn't work. Came back, did some thinking, reached back to a similar thing that happened in 1939 with Boeing and their Clipper um, flying boats. Made some changes and we had a completely successful flight uh, this afternoon and tonight. So let's get to it. I designed many radio control model aircraft um, in my years of flying to include six of them published in magazines. Design and flying a model airplane is fun. It's a lot of cha challenges. Things go right, things go wrong, but you tend to learn from it. I especially like the smaller uh, backyard flyers, these foam flyers, and that'll be the subject of today's video. But the most important part of these smaller aircraft is the control electronics and power pack. I am very much liking the Park Zone microelectronics. This little brick is a self-contained receiver, electronic speed control, two linear servos for two-channel operation. The speed control gives it a third channel. The tiny geared motor and the rechargeable IPO battery. This entire um, setup weighs 0 0.6 ounces. Over the um, my time building and designing airplanes to include Guilo's conversion, I'll put a card up here on, on the Guilo's conversion. I found for rules of thumb with the Park Zone equipment is a maximum weight of about two ounces for a 24 inch wingspan will usually come out about right. 28 to 30 inches can go up to 2.5 ounces. You can push it to three ounces, but three ounces is the absolute maximum for the Park Zone motors. Because the Park Zone equipment is so handy, so easy to use, I really tend to favor it, and I more or less design the airplane around those um, electronics. Really, my entire time flying, I've been using balsa, maybe some plastic, but I've started, I have to watch some YouTube videos to use foam board. Uh, this is a scrap piece of foam board. It comes in sheets about 30 inches by 20 inches. The thickness is 3 16ths of an inch thick, and there's paper covering, which can be peeled off on both sides. It's a very common material used for art boards, supplies, things of that nature available at Dollar um, Foam Store. But this foam, with proper techniques, and I'll show you a very useful technique, how to build a wing in hot glue, you can build an airplane in a day. So the focus of this video is this low wing model, but it began with an experiment with foam board with this model right here. You can see this is a very simple design. It's a profile model. The wing is here, the tail surface is the electronics. This model flies absolutely great. And so by designing this model, getting the proper distances, the wingspan is 24 inches, the tail size, I knew that I had a good airplane that flew well. And what I wanted to do when I uh, designed this airplane was to make two changes. I was going to take the wing and make it a low wing and also build a fuselage for the first time just to see how that would work using this as a design baseline. So let's take a moment to see how this um, profile airplane flew uh, when I when it flew it a couple days ago. We'll just take a quick look at how this flies. And again, this is three channels of control, rudder, elevator, and throttle. Drew a rough set of TurboCAD plans for the profile flyer. Uh, that just helps with the visualizing the layout. So let's take a look at the plans that I drew. I took that basic plan on TurboCAD, then changed it for the low wing um, layout, as well as the fuselage. So we'll take a look at those TurboCAD plans now. There's enough information on that on the video in terms of dimensions, distances, where you can uh, sketch up your own uh, model of this flyer, uh, because they're all straight lines except for the airfoil. So let's take a look at the plans. Here is the side and top view of the plane with all the information needed to draw to sketch out a drawing of your own to build this at home. Note also the ailerons are 3 sixteenths inch wide. I 
Once we had the plans drawn up, I wanted to see if the idea of using foam formers and sides would work for a model. So this is just a little representation of a fuselage. It works fine. You can see the foam board uh, formers right here, the front for the nose. I took an X-Acto knife, just scored the sides to let them bend to go towards the back. This is a very light, strong uh, structure. Even the foam on top and the front gives rigidity. I plan on keeping the bottoms open just to save weight and then I'll have access to all the equipment. So this is a good little test of what a fuselage will look like. I think the two key things that make these models fly as well as they do is the lightweight. Both the low wing and the high wing came in at 1.7 ounces. That's everything, battery, motor, and airplane. And the other thing is the um, wings actually have an airfoil shape. And you can see that I made foam ribs that go underneath and bend the foam to the ribs. So what I want to do is take a moment to show how I uh, build this wing. The notice of the foam board, it, foam board is it's rigid. You can't bend it easily. So how do you make it that you can bend it? What I do is I take an X-Acto knife with a metal straight edge. I just score every 16th inch along the top. And that way I kind of crack it. And I can quite easily bend it to the ribs. The other thing that's important is the ribs. When you do the wing, you've got to pin it to a flat uh, building board. If you try to hold the foam, turn it, and glue in the ribs, you're going to induce a twist on it. So make sure that everything is pinned down, you glue it on top, and that is the basis for the wing. There's no spar needed for this. It's 12 inches, so two of these is a 24-inch wingspan. I simply glued it in the middle. It's light enough. It, it just holds it together. It's really a quite strong um, wing. So let's take a minute and I will, with this, instead of the whole width of the wing, we'll just take this forged cord and we'll make a sample wing. So you cut out a series of ribs. I use uh, three for each wing half, seems to be enough. I'm going to use two for this demonstration. I literally sketch out the, the rib onto the paper. It's close enough for um, what we're doing here. Once you've sketched out the rib, you take your X-Acto knife. So this is the rib. We'll take off the paper both sides. Peels right off. It's always a good idea to touch it up with a sanding block. And these are the two ribs here. Now what we'll do for the wing is we'll take off the paper as well. Then with the straight edge, I'm just going to score the top of the wing for the curve over the ribs. You want to cut about halfway down. You don't want to cut through it. And that should be about enough. And what my technique is, is I leave sometimes paper on the back to keep that from splitting. But now with these cuts, you can pretty easily break it apart so you can have that curve that fits onto the ribs. And so what you do is you simply pin your two ribs to the building board, put the wing on top with the glue, and you will have a finished uh, wing that will look like this. TurboCAD is a great, is a great drawing program for the home hobbyist. The, you saw the, on the video the plans. I printed out a full size of the fuselage. Again, this helps me for visualizing uh, the size of the tail and things like that. So what we'll do now is we'll take a moment to look at some individual pictures of how I put together this fuselage step-by-step uh, -step with the two sides of the foam board. Here's a plan of the fuselage side traced out onto the foam. You'll need two fuselage sides. The two sides are shown here with the A and two of the B formers. The B formers glued in place at 90 degrees. And then the other fuselage side glued together. Very important to have a centerline reference to keep everything straight as you put the fuselage together. The tail surfaces to include the elevator and rudder. Finally, the complete, completed fuselage with cross members for an anchor point for the headrest and the fin. And here are the two models, the profile and fuselage models together. So this is a completed low wing uh, foam flyer. We'll just take a look at some of the design aspects. 
The wing is glued on. We showed you how to do the curve for the airfoil. The ailerons are three quarters of an inch wide. I used uh, clear uh, tape to glue on the hinges for, for everything, the ailerons as well as the elevator. Notice the score cuts at the two uh, fuselage former locations to bend it towards the front. Where Turbocat is especially helpful is to make sure that the engine, that the front is wide enough for the motor, the electronics. As I mentioned, I kept the bottom open so we can easily access the electronics. It was beneficial to have this wide enough to have the parts of electronics just installed on a little foam uh, tray that I installed there. The foam was glued on to a foam insert as well for the motor, and that works out fine. A little bit of down and right thrust. Plenty of uh, wiring for the ailerons. As you can see, this is where the ailerons plug in for this particular receiver, and there's no connection to the rudder because I'm just not going to use that. And this is the elevator. Open along here in the back, and notice some cross bracing from the foam just to have a mounting location for the fin and the headrest. So that is the rough overview of the airplane itself, total weight of 1.7 ounces. So we're going to go into some uh, flight videos of this plane in a moment, but I want to talk about what went wrong and how we fixed it. So this was the airplane when I test flew it yesterday and it had four crashes. There, there's no video of this because it would hand launch it and it would just, there was no ability to steer it whatsoever. It just, it was like the rudder was disconnected and eventually spiraled in. We did this four times because it's a foam flyer, it's not going to damage anything. And I thought for a while, maybe the rudder's jammed, it's not even working. The rudder's working fine. So back to the building room, the drawing board to try to figure out what's going on. So as I was thinking about that, it was, it, it concerned me or, or made me think because the profile version, where everything was the same, flew like a dream. You saw that in the previous video. The only thing different between this and that, the two things really, the low wing and the fact that I have a fuselage. So I thought about something that I read with Boeing test flights. In 1939, Boeing was building the Clipper series of flying boats to take the long flights from San Francisco over to Manila. And on the first flight of the um, Model 314 Clipper, the test pilot took off from the water. It's a four-engine aircraft, very large aircraft, carried 74 passengers, flew at 180 miles per hour. After takeoff, the test pilot, the Boeing test pilot reported, I cannot steer the airplane. The rudder does not work. And so he wound up um, maneuvering the airplane with differential thrust of the four engines. As this was happening, they would maintain aircraft control. One of the test engineers went to the back and opened a hatch that let him go to the top of the airplane while it was flying. These flying boats were unpressurized or a lot of hatches to have access to the top for pre-flight and maintenance. The engineer stuck his head up and reported to the pilot, I don't feel any wind. There's no relative wind. There was something in the design of the wings, the fuselage, the sponsors, whatever, that was blanking the airflow to the rudder. So the rudder was there, it was connected. It just didn't have any relative airflow to affect a turn. So the pilot safely landed the aircraft with um, differential thrust. Subsequent versions of the flying boat, the Clipper flying boats, they put in three rudders. They kept the central one and two out, outside ones. So let's take a look now at pictures of the single and triple rudder version of the Boeing flying boats. Here's a prototype of the Boeing Clipper flying boat. You can see the single tail in the back with just one rudder. The rudder did not work due to airflow blanking. Here is the production version with three uh, rudders in the back. So my airplane, I'm certainly not going to add outside rudders just because of complexity and weight, but I thought, well, what I can do is add ailerons. And as I mentioned earlier with the um, electronics, there are two types of these receivers. There's a four and a six channel. The difference being that there's an extra plug here for the ailerons. So we'll take a moment to look at the pictures of the two types of receivers, the ones with the aileron plugs and one without aileron plugs. Here are the two bricks. The one at left has the ailerons plugged in. You can see the aileron servos on the blue wing. This is a close-up of the two receivers. Again, the aileron plugs on the left and the receiver without the ailerons on the right. So this one has the aileron plugs. I happen to have two of the separate aileron servos handy. Put those on with sticky tape. Put on the ailerons. And I disconnected the rudder because it doesn't work. There's no need to have the rudder. And you can see that that was the trick. The ailerons, just the rudder was blank for whatever reason. I don't know if it's low wing, the wide fuselage, or a combination of both. But the rudder did not receive any airflow in this model. It's just what happened. 
ailerons work fine. They're probably a little bit sensitive, but I can easily turn that down with the transmitter. So that was a very good case of learning something through the design process. You had a profile model that flew perfectly. You make two small changes, a low wing and a fuselage, and it literally does not fly. Fall back to ailerons, we had a very successful flying model. So again, thank you for joining me in this video. I had a lot of fun building and flying this model. I think you will too. The Park Zone Electronics make it very easy. Best of luck with your modeling and design efforts. Thank you. We're back at the flying field, the parking lot, out back behind our house. So as I mentioned in the discussion of the workshop, the uh, flight yesterday with this plane with three channels, rudder, elevator, and throttle was a complete disaster. It was four crashes in a row. The rudder didn't work, as we discussed. Made modifications, the rudder is glued in place. We have still three channels, elevator and aileron. Aileron servos underneath on the wing. We did a quick test flight um, earlier this morning. The plane flew great, it'll, it'll show up right after this. It was very windy, but it handled the wind fine. We're back again, evening, a little bit calmer. We'll try to get in a few more flights. So very happy with the flights. You can see that it handled well. Um, I'd say the aileron is a little bit sensitive. I can easily reduce the throw on that. But for the test flights, I'd like to have a little bit of extra aileron and rather not enough. Uh, plenty of throttle power. Um, it handled the wind well. It's actually still pretty windy. So I think it's a good little flyer. I'm very happy with the way they came out. And um, if you want to try to build one, the free plans are on the video. Good luck. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you.